Hello there and uh, welcome back everyone. I'm excited to get Tim on the stage. My my good old oh, Tim. What is up? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Have you have you have you decided what kind of uh, song will we do karaoke on today, Tim? Two years. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm wondering if if it's it's a day late, but you know maybe we want to do. I remember. It was the 21st of September. <laughs> you know. I don't know the I don't know the words for the next part, but maybe Robert. No, I, no, I, I, nobody does. It's just da 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 da. -da. Yeah. We, we could do something. We could sing. You can hear me uh, there. We could do some sort of. We could do something classic too. You know. Right. <laughs> can you confirm? You can hear me. Yeah, yeah, we can yeah. we can hear you, Robert. All good on the uh, you you. We are hearing you and seeing you loud and clear. So, uh, Flo, do you want to do some intros about Robert? Oh yeah, of course. I will be delighted to. So, Robert is a managing partner of uh, JYDA, the consultancy for uh, ambitious agencies. So, Robert is Google's go-to speaker on business growth and runs master classes and consultancy assignments for agency leaders across the world. He's the author of Grow Your Digital Agency and Customer is King, forward by Sir Richard Branson. Yes, that Richard Branson. And about well, how him, do you think that? Ah, oh, it's a long story. How long have you got? <laughs> and about Tim, for, for those who don't know Tim, Tim is an entrepreneurial senior uh, interactive market, uh, marketing and sales executive with more than 18 years of experience in creating and executing business uh, product sales and marketing plans. He's a decisive leader and innovative thinker who has the proven ability to lead, recruit and drive multidisciplinary teams to generate new avenues for corporate growth. I think I got it right, Tim. So if there is any mistake there, I well, we'll just make it easier. So I coach agencies to help their clients better, and I own an agency to help my clients grow. Way easy, better, easy, way easy better. Thank easy. you, sir. So, Valentin, yeah. take it from here. I will. Uh, I will take it. But before taking it, uh, I, I must inform you, T, Tim, that I have an instrument here. So you you could get you could have the voice, and I can I can do the the. The audio right so can, have you seen that Wait, so far so, no. it's called but so TV. everybody should like mute like they should shut off their speakers right now so do you remember how, how it was tim <laughs> it was the 21st of september blah 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 yeah that was, and, that was beautiful. and that's how we are starting this panel so uh Yes. Let's let's so see I, what we have so on I our hope Somebody from a record label was listening. That's <laughs> to, to to pick the 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 young and talented. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we have? We should be a TikTok sensation. I'm pretty sure. Uh, that's for sure. And and as you can see, we already have the vertical video, so we are we are we are completely prepared for that. So. If you are here, that means that you care about customer lifetime value. And we have these two A players together with me. We are going to chat about how to nail customer lifetime value in the agency context, right? So how, how, how we can understand how we can leverage customer lifetime value. And I'm going to start by asking you, Jens, about what do you think is happening right now in the digital marketing arena? What's happening? What's happening, Robert? You're the first. <laughs> you <You're going laughs> <your mouth. laughs> Okay, so so what's happening? You can't get staff. Clients are freaking out about the impending recession. <clears throat> Nobody knows uh, what the what, what Google and Bing are going to do next. A whole lot of agency people are feeling really under the cosh. I mean, 18 months consecutively of e-commerce uh, spending going down month after month after month after the awesomeness of uh, of, of COVID for e-com. And so I think there's just loads of uncertainty. People keep saying it's a new normal. But uh, some agencies are doing phenomenally well, but a lot have got a bit lost and got a bit stuck in the weeds, haven't made the big enough changes, uh, are still doing the same saying, very commoditized, not charging enough, uh, not really thinking through what the customer really wants. How about you, Tim? What's, what's your... Well, so I, so... Here's so yes, all of that is true, but 
I think that there's that there's uh, for the first time in like a decade, e-commerce marketing is kind of hard, right? For a long <laughs> time, it was pretty easy. You know, you just spent money and more money got thrown back at you and it was awesome. And clients regularly, you know, you, they were vowed by return on ad spend as the best metric in the whole world. And now that attribution has become a little bit more real, even though it's all fake and return <laughs> on ad spend is actually all fake because it's such a limited view of everything. It's actually forcing agencies to become more complete because no longer do agencies just think, well, we're going to scale your Facebook spend or whatever. It is yeah. not about scale. It's actually, it's about, it's about fitting the things that you do into the overall context of your clients because clients, you know, if you were an e-commerce marketer right now, yeah, top line is super important, always has been, but the days of growth at all costs have thankfully, you know, passed us by. I mean, I think you can, uh, I don't know if you just know that that um, Walmart a long time ago had bought Shoebuy uh, at a fire sale, but Shoebuy is still losing, you know, I don't know, something like 9 million bucks a year or something on, on $115 million worth of revenue and they just shut it down. Um, and that's because top line revenue, while important, is no longer a story. Yeah, I think, I think on top of that, there's, there's a real, and I absolutely support that. What, what we get from people all the time is now is, is, is that <clears throat> they don't realize it, but it's like a back to basics marketing 101 is required. The number of times I say marketing is about segmentation and differentiation to bloody agencies. And, and the value proposition, you know, what is the value proposition? How do I stop myself being commoditized? Why do I look like everyone else? Because you are the same as everyone else. Because what you're doing is you're looking at everyone else's websites and copying them. What you're doing, <laughs> every single website from every single agency says, uh, um, we've got a great team. We've got great awards. Uh, we do great work for great people. Right, we're an extension of your team. Yeah. You know. But what's better than that? More than that. More than that is, more than that is we really, we really see things from the customer's point of view. And we do everything everyone else does, but a little bit cheaper. And there's no sense of of of, of an individual voice or standing for something. There's no sense of a bit of specialization. Not in everyone. There are obviously there are yeah. agencies that specialize in niche. But so many have become bland and they've allowed themselves to become bland and commoditized. They've become price takers from from Google and from and from from um, from Bing and from Facebook and in terms of the product they sell, they become the extended sales arm of these people and they lose their entrepreneurial spirit. You know, why did you go into business? In order to sell ads for a large multinational or to do great stuff for great people you want to work with. And I just think they've kind of lost, customers have become numbers. We need revenue. I think I think you're absolutely spot on there, Tim, there about that. We want to do sexy work. We want to do new work. Is that the work the clients really want? No. My, no. My real point <laughs> is if you go out to a pub or a bar or you go out for dinner and you go, hi, I work with agencies. And they go, what kind of agency? You get your marketing agency, digital agency. And they go, oh, God, we've got one of those. They are just pants. They don't call me. They send me 25-page reports. They talk in a foreign language. And the reason I've got them is because they're a bit better than the last one. So do you know one that might be a bit better than the one that I've got now? I mean... Just a bit. Just a bit. But... <laughs> well, we all know there's only... There's only... There are very few places where this much makes a difference. But the point is that you know I so I love my accountant. Okay, I adore my. If I can love my accountant and think my accountant is awesome and is a great guy, a, an agency can do it. Do I really know how good my accountant is? No, I don't, because I've only got one at any one time. But my accountant makes me believe that he's doing great stuff for me. And, and and I champion him and he does no advertising at all because I keep on standing on stages saying, I love my accountant. People say, who is it? 
Because but so, let, let, let me ask you, why do you love your accountant? Because he really looks after me. He is he is actually uh, interested not in the business but in what I want. So he starts from the from the starting point of what do you, Mr. Client, want to achieve? Okay, in that case, we can get your business to do that. So he's actually more interested in in what I want to achieve, you know. And it's the same thing. What people don't buy you for what you do; they buy you for what you do does for them. So he's starting off with the benefit of the benefit. One. Secondly, it's um, the money back guarantee. Thirdly, uh, it's a monthly payment in advance to a fixed contract. For, it just goes on and on and on and on. Now, it doesn't suit everyone, okay? Let's be absolutely clear. Not everyone wants it. He's, he is expensive, but I think I get awesome value for money. The clock doesn't go on. It's a fixed price for the year. Now, agents could do exactly the same piece. They could do the same thing about really, really getting into what it is that clients want, really digging into making clients feel good and feel happy. Look, if... Whoever, whoever you love and adore who's really, really famous was coming to have an appointment with you, if the Rolling Stones were coming to have an appointment with you, if you know, whoever it is who you, who you adore was going to have an appointment with you and came coming to your agency, you would clean up the coffee cups and put flowers out and make sure the car park was tidy. You'd probably wear a new shirt. All the staff would be there to say, hi, really good to see you, and so on and so forth. You'd give them celebrity service. But agencies don't give their clients celebrity service. They give them the minimum they can get by with. Hi, I'm the director. I'd love to have your account. And by the way, here's the junior junior to do the work. <laughs> and yeah, that's so, yeah, yeah. Please, but, Tim, go on. Yeah. So, so, but you know, there is like an inherent tension, right? Because the way that an agency is a, able to maximize the value of their client revenue is by you know having the fancy guys sell it and having the the least expensive person execute however i think that there's there's something that's that's really significantly missing for most agencies most agencies only think about what they do and they don't think about what the client needs and so yeah. one of the things when when i'm talking to agencies when they when i ask them and this actually goes for e-commerce marketers too. <laughs> you know, there's this concept that I have return on understanding. <laughs> so you really you like, so not, not return on investments, like return on understanding. Mm -hmm. It's actually the most, it's the single best investment you will ever yep. make, which is to really understand yep. your client's business and also their customers, because it is that expertise you know, you understanding what moves their audience that makes you valuable to the client, because otherwise all you're doing is just like, you know, you're clicking some buttons and letting the Facebook algorithm do its thing or, you know, and, but it's not until you understand like, oh, our client really, really, really wants to get more custom, more full price customers in the early part of the fashion season, rather than maximizing their revenue when there's a clearance sale. But I think it's an uh, outstanding remark, uh, Tim. Uh, Robert, sorry, I, I I I wanted to say something right after you've stated that thing with the junior of juniors. Thank you for your business. And now, uh, I think there is a trick here, and I wanna. I want your uh, both of your uh, uh, opinions on this aspect. We have the small agencies. They are starting. They have this uh, enthusiasm. We have the passionate entrepreneurs. They know how to do things. They acquire the first customer, the second, the third. Then they realize, I can't do all, all this work. I have to hire people. Then they hire their people. And then th those people must be trained, and they have to continue to bring bring money. Now the landscape has changed and uh, it was like that thing with warren buff that's the warren buffett said uh after the the uh, the, the tide goes empty. down yeah so you you can see who's swimming naked after yep. the so once you understand that we are in a different context right now what i think is happening is that the good old way of standardizing the work 
and delivering the bare minimum so that the client stays with you and then hiring new people and new people and then uh, hiring something like spending managers because in the performance marketing arena, most of them, they were just tweaking budgets and adding two, four keywords. And, you know, that that's how you scale. That's how you scale as an, as an agency. And it's there is no, the, it's not how the, you scale. It, that, that, that's it, the, doesn't say, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It, is, it doesn't work, and now it doesn't work even more than it uh, the, than right. it used to do to the, the changing conditions. And that's my my question: is how can you scale an agency right now in this new environment where marketing is not as it used to be, as easy as it used so to be? So there's two things. I probably forget the second one by the time I get there. But the first thing is, I've remembered it. Fantastic. So the first thing is, if you look at what customers want and you look at what agencies want to sell, they're different, okay? Yeah. What do customers want? They want more, better clients. What do agencies want? We want to do super cool work, you know? There's a there's a basic gap between the top five things that the client wants and the top five things that the majority of agencies want. All the research says that going way back to, to the beginning of the millennium, in fact. Everything supports that for professional services. They don't get that. On top of that, you know, why do, why do why do professional services get sacked? Two thirds of people say because of rubbish personal relationships. You made me feel bad. It's not to do with the numbers. You just made me feel bad. I'm going somewhere else. That's the first thing. And, and people refuse to acknowledge that. They're, they have this incredible myopia. You know, um, it's not about tactics, which agency thinks it is. Oh, yes, the agency gets it. It must be about strategy. It's not about strategy. Oh, go to the agency. This is getting really difficult. What is it about? about the customer oh the second thing is just pure mathematics we all have a leaky bucket if you have a standard leaky bucket at 25 percent leaving and you're growing at 20 percent in five years time your business is going to be nearly half the size it is now if you have a leaky bucket but it's only 15 percent or 10 percent and you're still growing 20 percent per year five years later you'll be you'll be half as big again the, the 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 gap is huge and there's like a, a lack of understanding all the focus is on all the focus is on client acquisition for, for clients as well as for themselves and it's not about customer retention it's not about how can we make customers feel great it's not about how can we get robert craven saying this is the best agency i've ever come across you've got to work with them so let me let me uh, thank you that was that was that's sort of spot on uh, but there is, I know, yeah, perfect. Uh, I, I did just see a uh, uh, something in ad age that said 69% of marketers didn't feel like their agency understood their business. Yeah. And it's it's because they agencies think that their job is on the keyboard and it isn't. You know, their job is, you know, I mean, like an, an agency isn't outsourced labor. Right, it's it's outsourced, you know, strategy, and in some respects, and you know, and specifically, it often ends up being a single channel strategy. But if the agency isn't putting in the effort to see how their strategy fits in with the rest of what's going on with the customer, it's out of step, and and that's what leads clients to think, you know, I like you have no idea what I'm going through. And also, I must say, especially in the in the early stages, so many agency owners have no frame of context for what it's like to be to work, you know, to be the VP of marketing for a company, what are the stresses and strains, you know, in any large organization, any one person has a limited amount of political capital that they want to expend. And so, it, you know, you want to make sure as an agency that your champion on the inside, so let's say it's the VP of marketing, you want to make sure that they love you enough that when push comes to shove and some and the CEO is saying, or the CFO, even worse, is saying, hey, we need to make some budget cuts. You want your champion to jump to your defense because they make you look good. They may understand you. They are proactively saying, this is what we should be doing next. Or, you know, you made this change over here. How does that impact what we're doing? You know, your 
agency needs to be thinking proactively, not reactively. And when you are thinking as an agency owner, well, I need to you know, keep my, my cost of delivery down below 35%. Well, that's really true, but you also need to think about how, how do I keep my influence with the client at 100%, right? And that's much more, that takes much more thought work than it does actual work because you need to be able to be empathetic and really focus on not only the metrics that make you look good, like, oh my God, our return on ad spend is amazing. You really want to make them know that, you know, we are contributing to the overall success of your business. Even if the metric that we're hanging, you know, that, that it's easy for us to hang our hat on isn't maybe awesome. So, you know, for instance, all of the agencies that were focused on return on ad spend when iOS 14 came out uh, and their ads, you know, their return on ad spend dropped by, I don't know, 75%, all of those agencies who were using this fake metric as a indicator of their fake success, suddenly they, you know, the chickens came home to roost and they are now thinking like, oh, well, we can't be held responsible for return on ad spend because it's all about Facebook or whatever. And yeah. it, it isn't about reach. It, it isn't about those easy metrics. It's about the hard metrics around making sure, you know, knowing what your client's strategic goals are and fitting your activities and result sets to support them. Now, yeah. and the, the big issue is the fact that that you know most agencies don't know to ask those questions and many early stage clients don't know what their strategy is and they think that the agency should s supply it yeah and that's not true either well, so uh, uh, please sorry, please think, please robert sorry well I, was say, I think i think part of our part of the job of the agency is to help the client navigate especially these difficult waters i think the other thing is that from the from the client's point of view, what am I what am I asking of my accountant or of my agency? I want you to understand your business first. Not all agencies do that, you know. You, you go in and you say, "So tell me, what's what's the latest thing going on with Google?" Uh, I want you to understand business, how business works. You know, just not an MBA, but I want you to understand how business works. And I want you to, to understand how my business works. I want you to understand that I run a solicitors that I run a sports shop. I want you to understand the, the nuts and bolts of a sports shop. And also I want you to understand me, you know? So, so it, 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 they've got to get that stuff right. And then they can do their great work. And, and I guess my argument is that they could, uh, their great work doesn't have to be so awesome if I, if I trust and if I love them. Yeah. And and more importantly, their bucket will become a lot less leaky if people believe in them and think they're the good guys and then all the other stuff about people forgiving you and being willing to pay more and you know existing customers are five times cheaper, blah, 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 blah. So I I almost struggle to understand why why would you why would you not make your entire agency around the clients? Unless you've got this yeah. incredibly pointy head and all you want to do is bang away at a keyboard all day. Yeah, Robert uh, and Tim, I, ha I have to, 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 to give you some, some, um, some context over what, what I've been doing in the last uh, six years or so regarding this, uh, this, this exact aspect. So our path was uh, starting, starting, it, uh, starting as a software as a service company and then we realized that our software as a service product was way too complex. We started to help our clients. We got into a place where we couldn't close business without providing uh, managed services, built a consulti consulting arm, ended up having 30 people in that consulting arm and uh, realizing that, you know what, we don't want to do it anymore. And that's why we've, uh, we've decided to go on the path of educating, uh, educating uh, clients and agencies. And now we have this, uh, this program uh, around training agencies and we, are, uh, we, we already have uh, a great success. However, what we've understood is that the agency owners are too comfortable. And uh, what, I, what I mean by comfortable, they are 
they they've been so acquainted with with, with the status quo. It was like they 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 thought that everything is going to happen as it used to. So they haven't understood that the brief that they are getting from their customers are is now help me fix my business model, help me survive, not uh, help me tweak some, some some budget. So in our unique value proposition, I'm doing these trainings, I'm having these uh, meetings. I, maybe I've met 80 different agency owners. Guess with how many of them I made a conversation which was worthy enough less than 15 and we are working with only 12 agencies uh, uh, ongoing training their their employees giving them free access to, to to our tools to our methodologies helping them become data driven because email marketing agencies for instance they don't know data all they know is to look in clavi or whatever open right. rates click through rates getting those pdfs sending them to the client onwards to the next client and that's all they do and i think the the good news is that those the, those companies will become obsolete because the yeah. the the music is changing and i wanted to, yeah. to hear your opinion on this they always have been obsolete <laughs> they didn't know it <laughs> you know all, all all of that you know i Jumping in the Wayback Machine, you know, your SEO agency would send you this like ridiculous like list of keywords and positions and, you know, you uh, H1 tag missing. And all of it was like super, super real. I mean, that was real data, but it had no context, it had no meaning. It, you know, should I be worried about this? Should I not be worried about this? Is, you know, is this something that I need? Like, do we need to like hire someone immediately to fix this? Well, now agencies really need to understand the impact of what they do on the client, not on the tool that they are using. And that is, I, I think that is the, the most, the, the, that's, that's the most important, that, that's the thing that um, over the past, let's say 15 years, the, the, the portal tools, the platform tools have been sufficiently complicated enough mm -hmm. that it was it was easy to hide behind the fact that you know how to navigate the interface better than someone else but now you really have to focus on how does my work make your company better too right absolutely 100 percent. and it's just the same as the accountant okay there are accountants who will just do the number crunching and go home there are accountants who will add awesome value to your business exactly the same with digital agencies as far as i'm concerned they have the they have this uh unparalleled view of lots of different businesses and how lots of business, different businesses work they have the, the ability to go into the boardroom where they can charge more because you're not charging by the hour you're charging by the added value they have the capacity to to consult about not marketing strategy but about business strategy and they have the capacity to influence their clients so that their clients become more customer focused as well so there's actually a you know a a really healthy uh, cycle of of helping people to be more customer focused again and again and again but because of this pointy head that most people have who are in agencies they 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 many find it very difficult to see that opportunity i'll be really really brief on this we did a very big project for a significant platform about making people video ready uh di digital agencies about a fifth of those digital agencies got it straight away oh right so we now do we now do video advertising and video and it was just like plug and play we'll get a sponsor we'll get a business plan we'll put the money in we'll get them a team give them, and off it goes but the the rest of the people in the room really struggled and what they were saying was, I run a digital agency. You're asking me to do video. And so, yeah, so what you're saying is you're saying a, mo a motorbike is faster than a car. And we're saying, yeah, it is. And they're saying, but but I want to drive a car. That's what I go into the business to right. do, to drive a car. <laughs> yeah, but motorbike's just the same. It's exactly the same. It's a bit different here and there. But basically, it's the same thing. I'm not happy. I'm, I think we'll stay where we are if that's OK. It's like, but, yeah. but if you don't do this. And, and maybe it's the type of people that go into agencies or went into agencies and as you said absolutely spot on tim 
they're too comfortable. They've been in there for five years. They've got their car. They've got their lifestyle. They've got people all around them. And they've got very good at what they did. But they're yeah. not seeing what the opportunity is now. They're not, they're not behaving like entrepreneurs. They've got themselves a job for life. And they don't want anything to change. I'll just keep doing the yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. that uh, that book, Who Stole My Cheese? Yeah. No, we, it's it's right. exactly right. this example. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, I, I, yeah. I think yeah. if if we you know I, I if we really want to like put a put a, a head on this, you know, clients need to honestly they need to demand more from their agencies and agencies need to demand more from their clients yeah. and you know they can't be stuck in the past they really need to be focused on making sure that they are aligned all the time and i i can see i i see my screen is frozen that's awesome it's a very very attractive picture of me if it is <laughs> no it's not frozen on our end at least okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, going to to the questions uh, tab, we have here a question regarding <laughs> how how can an agency differentiate in the uh, uh, in the current context? Oh, so so <laughs> so the obvious one is is sorry, I'm going to go back to 1961 Harvard Business Review. Marketing is all about segmentation and differentiation. So, who are you serving and why are you different from the rest? I should be able to phone you up and say why should at two o'clock in the morning and say why should i bother to buy from you when i can buy from the competition if you can't answer the phone i'm going to wait five minutes and phone you up again until you get it right so that's the whole thing about the proposition and narrowing the proposition to be an expert but i think it's also about the golden opportunity right now is to help clients to navigate this uncertainty uh it, all the research says in times of economic difficulty invest in marketing rather than sales, but invest in that side of the business, which is where agencies can help people. And it's it's not a very difficult argument to put together. It's pretty, it was totally conclusive. Um, and they should be out there and they should be navigate, helping their clients navigate the future. Uh, but that requires them to do more than just banging away on the keyboard. It re requires, requires eye contact and and engagement with people and saying what's the problem what's the issue is there some way i can help you so you're actually problem searching problem solving rather than just wearing this hat that says i run a digital agency and what we do is ppc or seo or email or whatever it is also i think every agency in order to differentiate they need to have a point of view they really need to be able to say, this is how it works. And not just this is how my channel works, but this is how marketing works. So they've got to have a real full point of view around their the entirety of what they do. Because if they're only thinking about, well, this is the thing that we do, you know, we've got a great process that drives results. Fantastic. So does everybody else. You've got to take that one step further and say, we've got this process because of our understanding of the market. Like when you follow what we do or you, or you work the way that we work, you end up with a better result set because of our concept of the way this whole thing works. And to the point where you might think that you are, you know, your point of view might be wrong or it may not be applicable to all customers. That's awesome. Oh my God, that is so good because you push away those people that aren't aligned with you. Yeah. And so if, you know, uh, um, for instance, in my little agency, we mm -hmm. just had a company come in and say that, you know, the only thing that we care about is return on ad spend. Like that's the only thing like, the, and I was like, awesome. We are not the right agency for you because we don't care about return on ad spend at all ever. And we're never, ever going to talk about it. And they're like, then how do you measure your success? Like we look at your sales. 
you know, and they're like, oh, really? Like, yeah, like, because that's what matters. Like, that's what drives the health of your business. My return on ad spend doesn't matter if, you know, I could have a bazillion return on ad spend, but if those customers aren't healthy for you, you know, they're only buying on sale, then great. Like, the, like that's that's not going to help you grow a full price business. So, so what you're talking about, Tim, is, is you're, you're talking about, about trust, about having that, that implicit trust between you and the client, that you trust them not to screw you over and to be demanding of you, but, but more importantly, they, they trust you to be honest with them. It's kind of quite an old fashioned kind of approach. Yeah, though, though it, does, it does go beyond trust. It, 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 goes, it, it goes to the point of the agency being comfortable in their own skin. Yeah. Not trying to please the customer, but rather trying to serve the customer. And those are completely different. Yeah. So there's, a I've, confidence you need to, the, there's a confidence the agency needs to have that mm -hmm. makes people think, okay, I, I, I feel safe safe with this agency. They, right. They've got a position. I, I pretty much agree with it. If that's what they're saying now, I'll trust what they're saying. Yeah, right. We'll go, we'll go with this. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, you know, the people who, who resonate with your point of view, they're going to be better, happier clients than the people that, you know, who are thinking, well, I need return on ad spend and we never mention it. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, one uh, one aspect that I would I would add here regarding differentiation, I think it's uh, it's about going uh, oblique. You know, it, it's this concept of obliquity where your goals you you can reach your goals as an agency if your customers will reach their goals. Now there is this huge disconnection between the goals that agencies have because their goal is simply let's make more money. If we want to make more money, let's let's get more cheap uh, talent right let's get uh, beginners and there there is this huge huge disconnection where you do this trade off you know between the quality of your work and uh, the goals of your client and uh, i think it's all about integrity at the end of the day because you can get away with it you can you know churn your customers but this is not going to work uh, forever and I think the the current economic conditions uh, are are showing that uh, agencies are losing uh, customers faster than ever. I've asked this question: What's the lifetime of your customers? Those agency owners, and they've said all of them said that this used to be around one year, and now it's around seven months. So that means the credit that you're getting from your customers is is shorter. The time that they are allocating is like your probation, your own probation now. And your, your, your probation period is, uh, uh, is, is not as it used to. So if you want to differentiate, you must A, understand your goals, the goals of your clients and be obsessed about how can I make my unit economics work so that you can achieve your goals and then your, the, your profit will follow eventually, you know, if you do right. that. Right. And, and you another know, thing is... Yeah, and and another thing, once you once you nail your unit at economics as a as a company, once you understand that you know what, it's better to have outstanding customers which are paying three, four, five years. We have customers which are with us since we've started to launch this uh, managed services thing for six years now, and it, we have some huge revenue from them because uh, at the end of the day, if you draw the line. They, they've referred a lot of business to us and it's pretty much the same thing. That's the way the, the, uh, the economy works, right? You have uh, incredible happy customers. They talk about you, they refer business to you and they keep on paying you and they are not going to make your life harder when you, when you drop the ball because you will drop the ball eventually, you know? I mean, it's not like you, you, you've made a, a, a well-oiled machine and everything is going to be fantastic forever. But this obliquity thing, it's, uh, it's one thing to differentiate and that's around the mindset of the agency owner. And the second thing is to, to go above and beyond your scope. 
So either you team up with other agencies, which are data driven, yep. you know the data totally. and you know email, and that's great. I mean, let's why why don't you work with them? Why don't you tell your client, you know what, those guys know know the game better than we do. Let's work with them. So that means you need to 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 build a network of highly specialized agencies that are complementary to to your offering. Either go uh, uh, beyond your scope and act as a full service agency because nowadays if you don't understand the whole customer journey that you are into with your channel then you are going to go out of business in a uh, uh, way faster than before right and the, the focus should be on making better money instead of more money yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's something i'd like to add to that as well which uh we've come across a few times which is if you look at the hotel industry, the people that make most money are not the five-star hotels. <clears throat> it's really expensive running Ritz Carlton. Uh, the hotels that make the most money, the three-star hotels, doing delivering to spec, exceeding expectation, consistently full capacity. Very often, agencies which are like three-star try to get five-star clients. They try to go up the tree to get clients which are three times, four times more valuable, bigger. And they really struggle to be able to deliver it. And I think agencies just need to know where they where they are in the in the landscape of are we servicing five star right. clients with five star service or are we servicing three star? And there's nothing wrong with three star. It's probably more profitable, probably easier to run because it's probably yeah. easier to blow people away with your customer service if they're expecting three star service. When people want five star service, it's never good enough. They want you to do everything for them. So it's not just about the best custom service ever, ever. What people want is they don't, and again, it's from the hotel industry, people don't want five-star service. They want a quick and fast response to anything they ask for. Right. Absolutely. Excellent. So as we're uh, uh, we, we are approaching the, the, the end of our session, I, I, I also wanted to, to pick your brains because we are we are starting, we are trying to write a booklet about how companies can improve their customer lifetime value. And uh, I want to hear your opinion. So based on what you're saying, we're going to use this and uh, we'll print that booklet and you'll get it in December as a gift from us. Oh, I love presents. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. My favorite wine is Barolo, just in case you were wondering. Um, <laughs> so you, want to know, you want to know our, our pithy little quotes, pithy little quotes about, about customer service? Yeah, about how to improve customer lifetime value. Yeah, so in, in an e-commerce context, how companies can improve their customer lifetime value? What's your, what's your take on that? I'm going to come up with three things. I think the first thing is the customer is angry. The customer is very angry. And I just don't think agencies get that. I think they believe they're doing a great job because people pay them and they, they don't look at the they don't look at the holes in the bucket. I think the second thing is you need to turn the business from being a sales machine to being a customer machine, customer satisfying, customer rewarding, customer focused machine. Uh, and we've done that in a number of agencies in a very, very simple way, by making people in the agency deliver video based on customer problems. What are the five things customers worry about when they go to your agency? How much would it cost? What could go wrong? What are the other ways I could get to where I can get? Who else could I be, be, be working with? Who do you work with? You can answer all that stuff with video. More importantly, video enables you to teach rather than sell. So, so obsessed with the customer and, and think about how you can actually answer the questions that they have. It makes you more sticky. Uh, and, and the final one is, you know, if you just put customers squarely in the middle of your dashboard as the, as the number one measure that you're you're measuring, then then you know, what what gets measured gets done. You know, as long as you're as long as you're measuring RAS, as long as you're measuring you know, return on value, that's what you're going to get. So it's about about repositioning the agency and then finally as we've discussed it's about standing for something being yeah. different uh and being really excited about how you can how you can help your how you can help your clients how you can help them to live the lives they want to live 
theme All over right. to you. All right, I'm gonna come at something that works for both agencies and e-commerce. So number one, the people that don't buy from you, that's awesome because they're gonna be happier somewhere else. Yeah. So just focus on the people that have that will buy from you and have bought from you. That's number one. Number two, if you don't if you weren't clear exactly on what you do, the impact that it has and what you why you are better, then nobody is going to hire or buy from you. So if you're you don't know why your service is better, different, or cooler, or you don't know why your product is better, different, or cooler, nobody's gonna buy it. And there's only ever three actually four things that are wrong when when you are trying to figure out what's up with you know how you improve the 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 lifetime value so you're either talking to the wrong people your presentation is bad your pricing is bad or the page is bad there's like if you break your thinking down to that in both agencies and e-commerce, it makes it focuses you on making sure that each one of those four P's is right. And once you've got that figured out, then the right people are showing up. They're having the right experience. The page is clear and your pricing is spot on. It all makes sense then. And so don't worry about attribution or you know where people are in the funnel. Just really think about it in the most simple terms possible. Am I talking to the right people? Am I telling them the right things? Is my pricing fair and clear? And is the presentation element of sufficient quality and understanding so that the potential client has all the information they need in order to make a decision? Spot on. Thanks a lot, uh, team. And uh, thanks a lot, Robert, for uh, for for your presence in the CLV revolution. Uh, any last thoughts or uh, where can uh, where can people follow you? I mean, where, where can get, get a hold of you? Uh, you can find me, this is very cleverly named, timkilroy.com. I worked hard on that. And if, <laughs> and if you're interested uh, in, uh, in working with an agency, ecomallies.com is probably not a bad place to, to check out. And by the before we go, uh, Valentin, um, next year we're going to practice before this. We're like, oh, we're going we to, I want, yeah, we have to. Like, we've got to get the dance moves down and also <laughs> costumes, man. Costumes going to be the killer. Man, I haven't shown you my apron. Yeah. So I have it. I know. I, I saw that in your video. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, 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 I am costume. I, I don't know about you. Maybe you could get I your know, chef. I don't, I didn't, you, know? you didn't send me an, you didn't send me an apron. Yeah. But you made Robert leave. <laughs> No, 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 I'm not my costume. Here's my costume, man. Here you go. Oh, nice. <laughs> Love it. Uh, you can get hold of me at rob, R-O-B, at guider.co. Guider stands for grow your digital agency.co. Uh, and as, as, as we pointed out here today, we want, you know, how do you get clients? You talk. You engage, you, you invest in the relationship. So that's what all three of us want to want to do. We want to invest in relationships with people. So contact us all. Excellent. Thanks a lot, uh, Robert. Thanks a lot, team.